Mike Moberg is a Princeton graduate. He's a contact experiencer, a writer, instructor, and also an attorney. Mike began a CE5 meditation meetup for contactees and experiencers and others who want to learn the CE5 protocols and engage in peaceful human initiated extraterrestrial or celestial being contact. In this interview, Mike's joining us and we're talking about uh, synchronicity and flying sources from the, uh, the works of Carl Jung. And uh, here's Mike. Hi, Mike. Hey, Dean. How are you doing tonight? I'm pretty good. I've been going through some of the notes that you sent me and I, I will admit, you know, I'm not the smartest, you know, or well, sharpest tool in the shed, but I think I've wrapped my head around this. And of course, you're a, you're a Princeton graduate. So, you know, probably a little bit easier for you, but we're going to talk about synchronicity, uh, flying sources, and we're going to, I believe we're going to marry the two up and you're going to explain to us what this project's all about. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, Dean, what, what I, let me kind of cue you in on some things. <clears throat> what got me started on Young is, uh, is what, when I was at university studying in Princeton, I was exposed to Carl Young and, and my sister's a, a clinical psychiatrist. She also teaches, she used to teach medicine um, at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, so we discussed Jung in, in quite depth when I was uh, 16, 17, 18 through my early 20s. So I was very, very um, cognizant of the whole idea of archetypes and uh, Jungian psychology. Um, but I, I never knew that he was a, a painter um, or I, I never recognized it. And what happened is uh, I was on the Internet and uh, I saw one of his books on, uh, <clears throat> on uh, painting, on his paintings. It's the art of uh, C.G. Jung. <clears throat> and um, as soon as I saw the cover, I knew something was up. And here, let me, this is, this is one of the works. Can okay. You, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Those of us who are experiencers would know exactly and immediately what that is. I can say that, we're referring to the light? Yeah, that's an orb. There's no, there's no doubt about it. So after I saw it and bought the book, um, it was like, wow, this, this guy's a painter. He must really know something about, uh, he must be an experiencer, a contactee. Uh, and then, you know, I went online again and then uh, saw that, uh, and I had not known this. He had, uh, this is the kind of stuff, you know, I went to Princeton and studied Buddhism for a year and never did I read um, chapter 23 of the Lotus Sutra where the, where the Buddha conjures up an extraterrestrial. Right. I mean, if, if if me being the way I am, if somebody had exposed me to that when I was 18 or 19 years old, uh, I I never would have left the department. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, but in, in more recent time, last year, but maybe about two years ago, so I researched a little bit, and then went into Young's later works, and then found um, flying saucers. Okay. And the title of the book is uh, Flying Saucers, A Modern Myth, uh, Things Seen in the Skies. And uh, I was all psyched up. I said, wow, um, you know, uh, young, um, wow, well, he, must, he must believe in him. Well, uh, after you read the book, <clears throat> he, he read it, he wrote it as a reply to a letter that he had written and it, I got a copy of the original someplace on my desk here. But he had written to um, a, a, a flying saucer enthusiast, the, the head of a flying saucer group in 1953, I believe it was. Um, and the Young's letter was paraphrased in such a way in the UFO periodical that it made him look like he was a believer in UFOs. Right. And, and society at that time, um, and... Um, Hold on a second. Society at that time was not in, in any way um, willing to accept an academic uh, seriously if they even breached the issue of UFOs. You, you, that was an easy way to lose your tenure, to lose your respect. It's not like um, the, the more recent uh, book um, by uh, Ms. Pasoka, The American Cosmic. I haven't gotten a read yet, but I've read excerpt, 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 excerpts of it. But uh, it was published by, um, I believe it was the Oxford University Press. 
And you know, back in Young's day, that never would have happened. That's uh, an academic press, you know, publishing a hardcover book about about UFOs and UFOlogy. Yeah. So things have changed in a massive way since 1953 and 1957. And what Young ended up doing was uh, was uh, pr was putting out this wonderful book, a very in depth book, um, about uh, his research into UFOlogy and the occurrence of UFOs, but he comes up with the conclusion that, well, you know, the, whether or not UFOs are real or not is irrelevant because what they are are manifestations of the psyche. And, uh, and this is where it starts to get deep. Now, <clears throat> the, you get halfway through the book, and then, and then Jung tells you, well, in order to understand this book, you really need to go back and read Synchronicity. So midway through the book, I went back and then read Synchronicity. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, I'm going to stick with flying saucers tonight because that's kind of the topic. And maybe we can go into Synchronicity at, at another period of time. But the big news in the Synchronicity uh, part of the equation is that unexpectedly uh, what Jung um, goes into is uh, the Tao Te Ching. And, um, and uh, and and he and another and a number of uh, of Taoist philosophers, uh, Lao Tzu, who was the initiator of, of of what's known today as Taoism, but the writer of the Tao Te Ching. And I'm finishing up my book on that. It's only taken six years, um, which is a lot of time for a uh, a book that only had uh, 77 pages. Um, but it, this is all pretty deep stuff. Well, and, just, uh, just Mike, just before you go on, just explain for people who don't know what the Tao is. Okay, well, um, the, well I, I almost, I, I sadly interchanged Tao and the Tao Te Ching. Um, but the Tao, we call it, it God. Um, uh, that's a good explanation for it in Western civilization. Uh, but it, it goes a little further. The Tao is the uh, universal being that created all gods. Mm -hmm. um, wow. it, is, it, it is the oneness we experience and we live in and we live through and it lives through us. It's the universal consciousness that unites us all. It's, uh, it's the entity that creates synchronicity. And uh, just a brief uh, foray into synchronicity, <clears throat> what Jung noticed was that certain things in his life were happening um, that could not be explained by way of chance because they happened so frequently. So what happens is uh, you get a, an X and a Y access, and uh, the higher the, <clears throat> the number of uh, synchronistic chance encounters, meetings, occurrences, um, the less likely it is to be chance, and the more likely it is that there's some sort of intelligence behind it. And, uh, and, and Jung was, um, he was a lot of things, but what he did say when, when asked, uh, famously, is he asked, well, well, do you believe in God? And he said, no, I don't believe, I know. And there's mm -hmm. a, a big difference in the two. So, so Jung got it, and he got God in the form that, that we find by reading the, the Tao Te Ching. And the, 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 the Tao Te Ching that I like to use is Stephen Mitchell's version. It's a wonderful translation. Um, I can't beat it. It's just, it's poetic. Um, that's what it looks like. Yep. You can find it online. Um, people like Eckhart Tolle uh, notoriously say uh, they never leave home without this book in their pocket. And those of us who know uh, Eckhart Tolle uh, yep. and through his works understand that this is a highly spiritual man who, you know, can teach anybody how to meditate in five minutes and uh, can, you know, can get people to recognize and integrate um, the Tao into their own lives to get rid of their problems. So. Um, that being the case, with a, just a brief introduction into uh, synchronicity, um, that's all I'll do. That's I, I really didn't prepare much for the, synch no. the synchronicity part of it, but um, I, but as far as the, the flying saucers part, I can go into that. Yeah, some kind can of I, depth. yeah. I just sorry to interrupt again, but there was just one part of the synchronicity, um, the, w one section of the book that I read, and I just kind of pulled out three lines that totally fascinated me. And it read, it quotes, that everything points to the mutual attraction of related objects, that if it says these happenings are as if they were the dream of a greater 
and more comprehensive consciousness, which is unknowable. Yeah, and that's that's the universal consciousness we strive to make uh, connection with or to recognize connection when we go into uh, our CE5s and do our uh, human-initiated in contact experiences. You have to tap into that. You have to recognize it. You have to, you know, uh, disassociate and uh, really dissolve your ego to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, you you hit the nail right on right on the head. Um, so. Uh, yeah, and this is a synchronicity. It was rather funny. It just occurred to me when I was preparing to, you know, to do this show tonight. Is uh, on, on on chapter in the books that I'm using, the part um, of synchronicity that specifically deals with uh, Young and uh, his uh, exegesis of uh, of the Tao and the Tao Te Ching is on page seventy seven. Um, the part of the uh, flying saucers. Uh, uh, a modern myth uh, thing seen in the skies. Um, the most important part of this book, in my opinion, that lays out the groundwork for where we have to go um, psychologically and politically in a, a post-disclosure world is also on page 77. Wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I wanted, and I wanted to bring in something important that I had, uh, I had, um, uh, I had worked on uh, two weeks ago and uh, it, too, was, and guess what chapter of the Tao Te Ching? 77. 77. So the fact that these three things have happened in this, this regard is synchronistic for those who are watching. You know, if it had just been one uh, by chance, but it was, it was three. So um, for those of you watching, that's a pretty good explanation of what synchronicity is all about. So, um, so with, with that, uh, I'm ready to answer any kind of questions you have. And if not, I can kind of explain, you know, well, we've already got up for 15 minutes on this, which we that, just starting to scratch the surface. Yeah, that's fine. But um, in, the, in Flying Saucers, uh, a modern myth, uh, Young talks about a psychic aspect to UFOs. What, what's, all, what's all that about? Yeah, um, the psychic aspect to UFOs is what he talks about is uh, in a in a post nuclear world. He's writing this in 1953 through I believe 57, um, and what he's saying is that the humanity has a spiritual hunger that yields um, numinous projections of the unconscious. Uh, numinous are, are spiritual. Um, they're um, uh, hold it, hold on a second. Um, I we have a have a dog in the house and it's scratching himself and I'm hearing jingle bells. So uh, oh. <laughs> give, me, give me a second. A little distracting. You, would you close the door, please? And thanks. Um, but um, so uh, yeah. So what it is is a projection of humanity to be saved. At least that's what Young says. And you have to realize that when he's talking about this. He's talking about flying saucers as nothing more than um, than psyche projections of the human soul and mind. Um, uh, for those who don't know, psyche is the the thing that it, it's human mind soul. It maintains the balance uh, while seeking individuation at the same time. Um, but it's a projection of the psyche because something is missing in our society, or something is dangerous in our society, and we all want to be saved. And that's what he equates UFOs with, is this, uh, the, the projections of the psyche, like, uh, you, know, you know, magical Jesus coming to, you know, the world to save us all because we all need to be saved. Because if we don't, we risk a total uh, atomic annihilation. So is he, is he saying that the UFOs that we see are not physical, that they're, they're, they're being produced by our psyche? Yeah, that's what he's saying. And, and since starting on this book, I've had a conversation with somebody that knew one of Carl Jung's um, grandchildren. And the grandchild conveyed to this person that, yes, uh, Carl Jung was, in fact, an experiencer. So he not only um, personally knew uh, UFOs, and you can see that in his paintings, um, but he, but, and I take it a step further, 
he had to have been afraid of being outed because if he had been outed, there's this great body of work by, by a post Freudian psychiatrist who, who has done more for psychiatry and for religion and for insight into the human soul than anybody ever has. And to, for him to go out and admit that, yeah, I believe UFOs and they're real and this is what it's all about, would have negated a, a body of work that stretched uh, almost 75 years. So he had to be very, very cautious in uh, dealing with the subject, which is why his thesis was, is, well, we're not going to treat these as real. We're going to treat these as manifestations of the human psyche. And by the way, it doesn't matter if they're real or not. It's still, uh, it, it's still the result of the same thing. Man's uh, yearning for a spiritual existence because the physical existence just don't, doesn't get us to where we need to be as human beings. We're all trying to get back to what we were supposed to be when we were made. And that's the disconnect that we have in society. And that's what the disconnect that's going on right now. Um, and I'll get into a little bit about what he says about collectivism and the kind of governments that work and don't work uh, and extrapolate that out a little bit. But, that, but you got it right. He's basically saying, well, I'm not going to treat these things as real at this point. Yeah. So, well, he, talk, he talks about UFOs being seen in larger numbers during times when humanity is in trouble, which is basically right now. Yeah, and that's what we're seeing all over the board is there's more and more uh, you know, recorded sightings. There are more and more uh, CE5 groups getting together and actually summoning the craft in themselves. You know, we, we do it here every month. We have great luck in it. There's nary a month goes by where we, we don't make significant contact. And some of the contact has been, you know, literally out of, out of this world. And it all comes from um, a universal consciousness where you disassociate yourself from um, the physical world and go inside through the process of meditation and very simple meditation too. It doesn't take much to remove yourself from um, the experience we have uh, as human beings that are uh, tied into our egos and materialism. I know it sounds very religious, but it's not. This is a, this is a form of, of uh, metaphysics and a discussion of reality as it truly is. Hmm. He also suggested that, um, UFOs represent a modern myth. So I was trying to make sense of that, but um, I don't think I quite nailed it. So I might just get you to explain what he meant by that. Well, that's a good question. I haven't thought about, I haven't thought about it much. But uh, what he did, what what you, what Young did was he he dealt with with myth, and out of myth you get archetypes. And Joseph Campbell did the same thing with the hero with a thousand faces. If you haven't read it, it's one of the most enjoyable reads you'll ever have. And if you haven't, and if those out there who haven't listened to Joseph Campbell, please do. I mean, he's absolutely out of this world. He's passed away. He was a professor, I believe, at Sarah Lawrence, and he's, you know, you know, Bill Moyers and he were really tight, and there was a show on with with Joseph Campbell, but um, uh, but it's all one, it's all one and the same thing. If if it's a myth. Uh, it's a manifestation of an archetype. Um, you know, for example, Zeus is an archetype of the uh, alpha male. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Venus is the archetype of the uh, of the sensuous and, and, and beautiful Madonna, the, the perfect female. Um, so th this is what we're talking about with myths. And he equates UFOs, you know, at the same level. Um, you know, we're not going to admit that Zeus was real. We're not going to admit that Venus was real. And in, in this regard, when it comes to the modern myth, he's not going to admit that UFOs are real. So that's my own interpretation, but I, I think it's pretty close to right. Yeah. So I, I was just, just wondering what, what the, the mainline UFO community would, or how, how they would react. Would they push back on, on, on a theory like this? Well, you know, the theory isn't the thing, and the, and, and the saving grace of this is that he admits that it doesn't matter if UFOs are real or not. This is, this is a human need, and this is what the human need is. So the UFO community has to get out of the nuts and bolts and then read Jung for what he's really saying here. He's really saying, look, I really can't tell you about, um, about what I know and about what I really think about the reality of UFOs. I mean, he was a, a UFO research enthusiast himself, and that's what got him in trouble um, by writing uh, this, this letter. Um, 
essentially acknowledging um, the uh, acknowledging UFOs in a, a certain form. I've, I've got a copy of the letter around here someplace. Oh, wait a minute. Shows you how badly I prepare. Um, Ah, yes, I managed to dig this one up. But uh, would, would you like me to read it? Sure, yeah. Okay. Just give me a sec. Uh, the problem with UFOs is that you rightly say a very fascinating one. And what he's saying is the problem of UFOs. I'm not saying the existence, but the problem of UFOs is, right, is, is, as you rightly say, a very fascinating one. But it is as puzzling as it is fascinating. Since in spite of all observations I know of, there is no certainty about their very nature. On the other side, there's an overwhelming material, uh, there's over, an overwhelming material pointing to their legendary and mythological aspect. As a matter of fact, the psychological aspect is so impressive that one almost must regret that the UFOs seem to be real after all. I have followed up the literature as much as possible and it looks to me as if something were seen and even confirmed by radar, but nobody knows exactly what is seen Kind of reminds you of where we are today. Yeah. Uh, in consideration of the psychological aspect of the phenomenon, I've written a booklet about it, which is soon to appear. It's uh, also in the process of being translated into English. Um, Jung was uh, Swiss. I don't know what he wrote in um, initially, but it was probably German. Uh, unfortunately, being occupied with other tasks, I'm able to meet your proposition being rather old. I have uh, to economize my energies. And I think we all know what that's all about as we get older ourselves. But that's the letter that got him in trouble. And that was a letter that was paraphrased in a, in a national UFO publication that made people start thinking that, uh, that Young believed in UFOs and, and to which he had to respond with um, the book the way he did by being kind of neutral about it and saying they're, they're psychological, um, psychological manifestations.